This is the world's largest and most expensive science lab. Here, scientists attempt to answer questions like, how did the universe evolve? Are there higher dimensions? And how can we search for the existence of dark matter? This summer, I had the opportunity to travel to Geneva, Switzerland to participate in some research at the world's largest particle physics research center, CERN, otherwise known as the European Council for Nuclear Research. CERN draws collaboration from scientists and engineers all around the world. Here we are in this uh, restaurant and probably you could count 20 nationalities if not more. CERN's mission? To provide state-of-the-art particle accelerator facilities that enable world-class physics research and exploration of new boundaries in science and technology. By the way, this video is sponsored by Altium Designer. Altium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Go click on the link below and try it for free today. More on that later. Let's talk about some physics first. Did you know that protons and neutrons are actually divisible into even smaller particles known as quarks? Quarks, along with leptons, are actually the elementary particles that make up all the matter around us. In addition to matter, we also experience forces. For example, my hair can get a little bit staticky because of electricity, or gravity is what's keeping me in my chair right now. There are actually four fundamental forces at play in the universe. The electromagnetic force, the gravitational force, the strong force, and the weak force. I think it's safe to say that we're probably all familiar with the electromagnetic force and the gravitational force. But what about the strong force and the weak force? Well, these forces only work at a very short range, so they're only effective in like subatomic interactions, which probably explains why we don't really know too much about them because, well, they only are, you know, taking place in the super subatomic structure of everything that's inside of us, but that's a different matter. No pun intended. The strong force is actually what binds together the quarks in various types of hadrons. And if you don't know what a hadron is, think proton and neutron. Those are types of hadrons. Meanwhile, the weak force is responsible for particle decay, which is when one type of subatomic particle turns into another. Of these forces, three of them are known to have something called a force carrier, which is a particle that kind of acts as a messenger between different particles in different interactions. For the electromagnetic force, it's the photon. For the strong force, it's the gluon. And for the weak force, it's the W and Z bosons. Now, we actually think that there is a hypothesized graviton that is the magical force carrier of gravity, but hasn't been discovered yet. And there are physicists at CERN that are working on trying to find this graviton. Last but not least, there's one more particle you might have heard of, the Higgs boson, which was actually discovered at CERN in 2012. We have observed a new particle consistent with a Higgs boson. And this is a particle that gives mass to other fundamental particles. Together, these particles and forces, except gravity, are what make up the standard model, which is a model that tries to explain how all these particles relate to one another and interact with one another. At CERN, scientists and engineers work together to study these tiny particles that make up everything around us. They are the building blocks of matter, so they matter. So in order to study these particles, we first need a way to produce them, which is not that easy of a task because we literally have to break down matter in order to you know, get these particles. We can do this by accelerating particles to nearly the speed of light and then smashing them together to create this collision that produces enough energy to break down all this matter into its fundamental particles. Therefore, at CERN, you can find particle accelerators that will accelerate these particles, as well as detectors that will actually figure out what's going on at the collision point. CERN is actually home to the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, which is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. 
The particles that enter the LHC are in the form of hydrogen and they come from a hydrogen bottle. Now, the hydrogen then gets stripped of its electron, which leaves behind a single proton. These positively charged protons then enter something called the LINAC, which is a linear accelerator. These particles go into the proton synchrotron booster, and then the proton synchrotron, and then the super proton synchrotron, before finally entering the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. Each of these circular accelerators uses an electromagnetic field to accelerate and bend the particles so that they can eventually reach 99.9999991% the speed of light. Now the size of the LHC is actually massive. It's 16.5 miles or 27 kilometers of underground tunnel. Finally, these particles are then ready to be collided at one of the multiple collision sites that can be found around the LHC. And this summer, I had the opportunity to visit two of the detectors, CMS and Atlas. My experience tells me that the best is for me to shut up. You, tell, you take all the pictures and then if you have questions, let me know. Both of these detectors are general purpose detectors, which means that they both have a large range of scientific goals. In order to go see the detectors for yourself, you have to helm it up and go down into these caverns, which is where they keep them. CMS stands for the Compact Muon Solenoid. It stands at 21 meters long, 15 meters high, and 15 meters wide and it weighs around 14,000 tons. It uses a powerful solenoid magnet to generate a four Tesla magnetic field, which is like 100,000 times the strength of Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field is very, very intense. When we turn on the magnetic field, the whole thing snaps into place. And when I say snaps, I literally mean snap. It goes crack and pop. Atlas stands for a toroidal LHC apparatus. Larger than CMS, Atlas actually stands at 46 meters long, 25 meters high, and 25 meters wide. However, it only weighs 7,000 tons, only, half the weight of CMS. And it generates a two Tesla field, which is two Teslas less than CMS. Unfortunately, when I visited Atlas, the detector's doors were closed, so I couldn't see the intricate parts of the detector behind them. But I could just stand there in awe of the sheer size of this device. Actually, during one of my lunch breaks, I was invited to go see the new small wheel of Atlas. And well, plot twist, it was not that small. In both of these detectors, a powerful magnet actually bends the charged particles coming out of the collision so that we can measure not only the charge, but also the momentum of the particle. The trackers will measure the trajectory or the track of the particles and the calorimeters will measure the energy. Finally, then we detect the muons. So muons are actually part of the lepton family with the electrons. You can think of the muon as kind of the heavier cousin of the electron. I also thought it was really cool that during both of these tours, the tour guides had mentioned how the world had to just kind of come together in order to build these detectors. By that, I mean there was one part that might have been built in Germany, and another part built in China, and another in the US, another in Brazil, and the list just keeps going on and on. Finally, once all the collisions occur, there is so much recorded data that needs to get stored. And CERN's worldwide LHC computing grid system takes care of all the processing, storing, and analyzing of the data collected from the LHC. There's this like tier system that they have in place. And at tier zero, all the raw data from the experiments gets stored in the CERN data center. From there, additional copies might get sent all around the world for storage or processing or analysis. Now, as detector technology advances, we can collect more and more data from these experiments. But the projected trajectory of how much data we need to store is like so large that we just, it's, we can't keep up. 
and currently we're already in the petabytes range. And in case you don't know what a petabyte is, one petabyte is 1,000 terabytes or 1 million gigabytes. Yeah, that's like mind-blowingly really, really big. Yeah. So one solution to this data storage problem has been data compression, which basically encodes or modifies the data in order to reduce the amount of space that it needs to take up. This summer, I had the opportunity to work on a project which actually assessed the performance of a new data compression algorithm on some CMS data. At CERN, I had the opportunity to see with my own eyes these massive scientific instruments that are really pushing the frontiers of technology and being able to witness firsthand the sheer size of these detectors and the complicated intricacies that you know go into every single piece along the way that was truly eye-opening you really find all technologies it's a big machine and for it to continuously work you have many fields that needs to collaborate successfully nonetheless it was so amazing to be part of a collaboration that really tries to answer some of the hardest questions in the universe like what is the universe truly made of and how does it work? While I did feel small and humbled, I was also proud to just contribute to something so much greater than myself with so much global scientific impact. I had the opportunity to meet and become friends with many of the brilliant minds at CERN. Woo! Hello. My name is Divya Coman. Hi, I'm Bruno. My name is Martin. Hi. My name is Afira. Everyone seemed to come from a different place in the world. Belgium, Romania, Slovenia, the UK, Hungary. Converging here to dig deeper into a common goal, understanding the fundamental physics that governs our universe. Each of us is contributing such a small piece of the puzzle. I work in the vacuum group. The antimatter factory. Heavy ion physics and high energy physics in the theory department. But Without our piece, that puzzle would not be complete. Every component has just come together to make the entire experiment work. We try to keep the machine as clean as possible by removing all the gas from it. My main project is working on a new control room for the CMS experiment. Working with Yedi and Elena and uh, precisely non-electron cooling. I actually help scientists to set up their startup with a certain technology or another technology that they developed. Truly, it has been such an incredible experience to be here, to meet so many amazing people, to learn so much about physics and computing, and to witness firsthand the feats of engineering, collaboration, science, and technology that made all of this possible. Switzerland itself was also pretty amazing, so here's a two minute travel montage. are born from great opportunity. Say hi. <laughs> I see the Salaf Mountain. Yeah. A famous place to climb. It was one of the center of the world where they started to climb rock. I also have a YouTube channel, Jack Rakua. Gorgeous lights. Go check out his channel. <laughs> it's crazy to think that random strangers can become friends for a lifetime and spontaneous decisions can become great adventures. Just a few seconds can change the story that we write. And just looking back on my summer in Geneva, all the trails I hiked, all the fondue I ate, all the lakes I swam in, 
These experiences were just a million times better because of the friends I had by my side. I left Switzerland with so much more than just an incredibly rewarding experience working at one of the coolest places on earth. I left with so many wonderful memories of smiles and laughter, excitement and adrenaline. In between all the things that I did, it was really the small moments that made the experience so magical. I am grateful to have met so many kind, inspiring and welcoming people along the way and I am honored to call them my friends. While two months is not very long, I feel like I've known them for a lifetime. I hope we meet again someday, somewhere in the future. Au revoir! Au revoir! Au revoir! Yeah, thank you guys! Au revoir! It's a climb! And subscribe to my channel, Oscar Dos Santos. Channel about travelings and good stuff. Hey guys, this video was sponsored by Altium Designer. Remember these LEDs? I needed a software to design the circuit and the PCB layout. Altium Designer would have been perfect for this since it gives engineers effortless control over every aspect of the electronics design process and it has a super intuitive interface. If you're interested in building any electronics project, Go check out Altium Designer using the link in the description below and try it for free today. Lastly, I want to say thank you to anybody who's still watching the video up till now. So I've teamed up with Side by Side Gear and Moft to give away some tech travel accessories. I'll be giving away this computer carry sleeve as well as this tech pouch organizer. So leave a comment below and I'll randomly choose a winner on November 5th, 2021. May the odds be ever in your favor or something like that.